Hi, thanks for coming. Today I decided I was going to talk about files, rasps, rifflers, and other pattern makers tools that we use to shape wood rather than just um, machine tools. These tools are necessary to refine the cuts that we make for different objects. In some cases they're used for making a plane and um, and filing the inside so that it's not only smooth but it's at the proper angle. Those are called floats. Um, they're also used for if you're doing legs like this to shape these parts after you've coped out the rough shape. Um, you'd use them after you've used a spoke shave like this to make a shape but then to refine that you can use a file or a riffler or a rasp to refine those curves and get them where you really want them. These bent knives I use for my spoons but there's certain times in certain areas that I really want to refine it and get it smoother and for those outside pieces I'll use a file of some sort. Files work very well also on metal as you can see here if you uh, this is a piece of solid brass and you can see how shiny it is there where I filed that edge sometimes I'll put a screw in a piece of furniture and it'll be just a little bit proud and you can take a nice flat metal file like this and take down that and make it perfectly smooth so another use for them here I have an assortment in front of you of different types of files and um, and we'll go through some of their uses. So I've laid out these tools in some sort of order um, just to show you the differences in, in some of them. And I'd like to start off with these little scrapers. These are dental tools that um, usually after they've been used up to a certain point, dentists will give you free. But they're very handy in, uh, in small carvings and things like that to either pick wood out or even to detail lines. You can use something like this where I've ground off the end and I use it to just scratch in details. Um, across here, you see there are these hooks and these work really well whenever you're trying to pull out a piece of something. Um, particularly this one here I've used on, uh, on different knots and things to clean out the knot. All of these tools come in, in handy. Um, but you never know when. It's not a plan. It's sort of you go through and you need a specific tool to do a job and you find the best one for it. Um, across here, these are more pattern makers, rifflers. Now, the riffler, as opposed to the regular files, they are files, but they're in an S-curve shape, you see here. And then the profiles of them vary. This one here, you see, is spear-shaped on one side and round it over. So this would have several uses, either cutting in a nice V cut in something or a little wider on the outside portion, smoothing an area. And these are pretty fine. Um, these have what's called a safe side. No, no filing on those sides, but just here is a little fine sawtooth. I think maybe you can hear it. And that's to get into a little spot where you need to, particularly when you're doing miniature work. These come in very handy. So these are rifflers here. This is a, a pattern maker's riffler where there is no uh, file on one side, it's just on the other. And that's so that you can get into an area and not worry about uh, sanding the top side while you're coming in and taking off from the other. So you'll find that some of these files are smooth on one side and that's just so that you can get into an area and clean it out and uh, and smooth it out without damaging a, a, a surface that's close to it. Um, in the books here 
I've laid these out for you to look at because it's a great way to learn about all the different types of files there are. Audell's has uh, a lot of uh, information about files and taking care of them and using them. Um, the Henry Diston catalog from 1914 has uh, also the regular files and all the sizes, which are plentiful, of the different types and sizes. And one of the things they have in here are files for bench filing machine. This is a machine that actually moves the file up and down. And here's an example of two of those files. The way you recognize them is they have a round like a drill bit end here. And they work by going in this bench machine and it has a hole here and, and, and it goes up and down and you work the wood into that or the metal into that as opposed to using the file by hand. So there's an example of two of those. Um, also in here, we were talking about these um, spoons and floats for pattern makers. And in here you can see uh, the lifter and spoon in this uh, wood pattern making by Herbert McCaslin. Um, it's a very good book for pattern making and doing the molds, lathe, and bench work, and how to use these tools. So these are pattern makers tools, so I'll put them in here. And I want to show you this little gem. All of these individually come very much in handy. These are, you see, two curved surfaces here and a straight saw edge. And then on this one is a s curved surface, but a saw edge that goes all the way around. So you can get into certain areas and flush cut things off or uh, into a curved area and clean it out. And the same thing with this, all precision work. The other book that gives you some good information, and I'd suggest anybody that's interested in tools, using them or collecting them, should collect these old catalogs. Whether they're reprints or originals doesn't really matter. But uh, this is a... Uh, W.P. Walters uh, and Sons, their seventh edition. And in there, here are the rifflers that we talked about. And you see with these different shapes, and here are the profiles of them on the side here, so you can see the different ones, and then the wood rasps down here. A good way to learn is to find these old books. So as we go through here, we've gone up to the machined files. These are called needle files. And they're very, very small, again, precision, and very, very fine. Unlike the rasps and the very coarse ones, you see how fine they are. And those are for getting in little areas that are difficult to get to or smoothing off metal and flushing it out. Here are the triangular files of different sizes. And you may think it's silly to have so many, but I've used all of them. Then on the other side here, you have these round on one side and flat on the other. And the number of teeth on them determines how smooth or, uh, or dull they are. You can see these rasps here have very, very coarse threads. And they're really good for working wo wood very, very fast. These are more like farrier's rasps or floats for plane makers because they're flat and square and notice this is called a flat standard by Nicholson that is not serrated on the edges, whereas most other ones, let me get another flat mill, you see are also on the sides. This is called a double cut when it has cuts this way and this way. And it tends to make a smoother cut on the wood that you're working with having the double. So what we've got here, this is called a mill file. And you notice that it's got one line as opposed to these having a line this way and a crosshatched line this way. The, this is a smooth one. You can see how fine that is compared to this one here. 
This one here would be considered a bastard. A bastard is a middle from fine to uh, coarse. That's just a, not a reference to its heritage, but to the uh, how smooth it actually is. So this is called a mill file because it's flat and square and because it's a single cut. And the reason it's called mill is because in the old sawmills, this is what they used to sharpen the teeth of the mill saws. Um, that's what the reference mill is. Then as we come down here from these all these flat files, we come to some that are knife edged like this, where it's thin on one side, like a knife, serrated as well and then wide on the other side, tapered. This is fairly fine. These here are designed, if you notice, with a knife edge, very fine, but only cut on one side, smooth on the other. Again, this is so that you can get into an area and not damage the upper part while you're working on the lower part. So an adjacent piece doesn't get hurt while you're working on the lower part. This teardrop file, there are different names for all of these, um, is a single cut, but it's also cut around here. And these are known as hinge or keyhole files um, because of their shape. Here's a triangular file, single cut, single cut. This one's interesting because while it looks like a square, it really isn't. It's more dovetailed. It's wider on the bottom than it is on the top. It's not serrated on the sides at all. It's serrated on the bottom, double cut, and double cut on the top. Very, very fine. These are called rat tail files because they're tapered rounds and they come down to a point. Some are rat tailed down and then they bend. These are called straight round files. Notice they're not tapered. And some are very coarse and then they go to fine and to ultra fine. The same way with all of the files, you can get different grades of them. 